the big bank that is the record company, it doesn't have as much money anymore. Like yeah. I, I, I remember <laughs> when we were, uh, like we get record reps picking us up at the venue and taking us to the radio station to do interviews or whatever. And then, and the cars they'd pick us up in were these like really nice sedans, you know, like these, or SUVs and leather. And it's just like, it's oh, luxury. Geez, these, these are nice cars. Yeah. And then sort of by the end of it, it was like, Okay, I'm taking TTC there. Can you guys can you guys meet me there? You know, it could just, you could yeah, see, yeah. <laughs> you, you could see how it's uh, you could see how it's how it's changed, and um, you know, so it's not as good in that standpoint, but better because the artists have control of their own thing, you know, and and uh, you know, from a just a purely artistic standpoint, that is that is of benefit. Today on the show, we are joined with platinum selling artist Daniel Graves. You may know Daniel from the iconic band The Watchmen. He is now a duo act with Joey Serlin, who is the guitar player of The Watchmen, and they go by the name Serlin Graves. They have recently released a brand new album they wrote over the pandemic titled Sad Songs for Sale, and will be performing that live August 12th at the Horseshoe Tavern. This was a great chat around talking about everything Daniel is up to now. We take a look back at the history of the Watchmen, how the record labels changed with the boom of the internet, writing music, collaboration with Joey, and being the owner of the Motel Bar in Parkdale, and much more. Hope you guys enjoy this one. We're going to get right into it. Nice to meet you, Daniel. Yes, hello there. You're Sean, right? Yes, I am Sean. Uh, Very good. Nice yeah. to have you here. Yeah, it's 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 awesome to meet you. Uh, just uh, kind of going back uh, to when I grew up listening to music, uh, you were always on rotation on the radio with the Watchmen too. So <laughs> it's kind of a, a yeah, soundtrack yeah. of my youth there. So it's 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 uh, oh, nice one. Well, that's good. I'm uh, I'm I'm happy to hear it. We've been uh, we've been doing it for a while. So uh, I like to I like to meet people who like me. <laughs> yeah, awesome, awesome. Then we're gonna have a good time. Um, yeah. Um, so basically, like, uh, you got this album coming out. And what's so interesting to me is beyond the music, this is pretty much a story of friendship in a way of you and Joey kind of 30 years oh. being together. And uh, instead of doing something like The Watchmen, you guys decided to do a duo. And uh, yeah, yeah, you know, no, tell it, me a little it, bit it, about that. Or? Yeah, it, it's well, I mean, I've been obviously in The Watchmen with Joe for 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 30 years as you say and but i've also known him since i was like five years old so oh no like, way we, we are we are indeed uh we are indeed uh, very very close friends and uh you know so i i think i think musically we're we're able to you know just sort of finish finish each other's sentences uh in an audio capacity and um to me i mean i i think his his plans were probably were probably a little different um i think he was a bit more focused on like, yeah we're gonna make a record we're gonna do it and to me it was like okay well let's let's you know he i i have a studio i'm well, i'm in my bar right now and he his studio is not too far away and it's like hey man i got this tune uh you know well you want to come by and uh, do a few passes on the vocals and then i would sort of say well i got this tune you want to you want to put some rock and roll all over it or or you know so it it, it was to, to me that the best part of this project was was uh, because it was so organic and and at the end of the process i mean during the pandemic no one's doing anything uh i guess it was like six or seven months at the end of it it's like geez man we got like it looks like we got a record here you know like and he probably already knew it but and i was like oh, okay well i was just doing it because i like to sing his tunes because i like his tunes and mm -hmm. and all that and and it just sort of ended up at the end of the day it was like okay well we have uh, we have something uh, really special here. I'm I'm really proud of of a lot of the music, or all of the music, really, and how it it does sort of seem to tell a story of of uh, of kind of where we're at now. I guess I mean a lot of my songs are sort of older. His I think are a little newer, but they 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 just sort of speak to kind of where we are now. And and uh, uh, it was a really it was just a really kind of beautiful thing at the end of the process. Saying okay, I think we have a record here, and and. And we do, and and it it, uh, it it does all the things that that all of our records have done, and I'm I'm you know I'm really proud of it. So that's uh, that's where that goes. 
Yeah, that sounds very special and organic, especially uh, like you mentioned, it kind of tells a tale of like the times we're in right now, too. And right. especially for you to like just as pals, just to have that escape, whether you planned on making it an album or not, or just doing yeah. it to do it. Yeah, it sounds yeah. very natural, like the music that's coming out of you guys. And yeah, the, the, the thing that, that's great about this, this sort of period of time and, and what we're doing, or one of the great things for me is that we're doing it kind of you know, we're, we're, we're accomplished in, in the music biz. We have golden platinum records. We we've, we've done things sort of uh, from a, a commercial sort of standpoint and, and not to say we, I wouldn't want to <laughs> sell a whole bunch of these records, Yeah. but, but, but the intention, uh, you know, what we didn't, we, we don't need it to, to sort of feed our families like, like we yeah. did in the, in the mid nineties when it was the only thing I'm doing, we're all doing other things and, but we're all still super creative and uh so I, I think that that's kind of the best part of it is that it, it just we used to rehearse in joey's basement uh like when I, when I was 16 or 17 or whatever and and his parents would would flick the light off and on if we got too loud and and <laughs> and they were always flicking the light off <laughs> uh, uh, but <clears throat> that that was it so so this this process like you know, so many years later, so many decades later, it feels, it feels like that, it feels like that again, because where we, because we, you know, when you're 18, 17, you don't, you don't, you're not thinking, oh, you know, I'm, this is what I'm going to do for, for like 30 years. You just sort of think, oh, yeah, let's yeah. make some music. Let's, let's bang some things out. And, and now uh, that it feels like it's, it's returned to that again, because we have no, you know, expectations or, or no need for, this to you know get to the top of the charts but in my opinion uh, it's 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 worthy of uh it's worthy of a lot of people's ears yeah definitely and that that just like whole process just sounds like beautiful and therapeutic as well just not mm -hmm. thinking okay which which what's going to be the radio hit or whatever just right. kind of just doing it and there's actually like a certain type of rawness like now that you're explaining how you guys yeah. put this together like you it bleeds through the music and i think that's what's special about the album it's that's really cool to hear yeah awesome yeah also it's uh it's interesting too that you guys have been playing for so long together and you've seen just the waves of how the industry shifted like you guys right. kind of uh had your big break right before I don't know. I, I always call it like the internet era, like right after right. like 2000s yeah. and everything. And uh, I kind of want to know a little bit about like those old times. Like, like I know like the scene now of like what people are trying to do to get their stuff out, like whether it's like through PR or different like social media, Spotify, stuff like that. But back in the day, it's like, were you knocking on like record uh, labels like doors or like sending in well, mail letters. yeah i guess i mean the, the, the thing that's so interesting about about hindsight and and retrospect is that you know i i, I think about the 90s now um and and a lot of people do and why there's so much so such a resurgence of those sort of 90s canadian bands and and probably all over the world bands um because it, it was it like we, we were we were rich in that not rich but it the, the the industry was just like rife with with so much great stuff and and there was one way to get it and i was going to you know hmv or or whatever and doing all that stuff and and we didn't really know how how good we had it at that point because now i mean i and i'm i'm grateful that i'm not trying to eke out a living uh uh, in in the music business now because it just seems impossible. I mean, you you make so much more per record, but but you don't have the sort of vehicle to get yourself out anymore. You sell way less records, and and um, it, it's it's something that that you don't really realize until you until you sort of look back at it. Um, I remember one story. We so this was for. Uh, this was in the trees, our, our second record, and we were playing in Madison, Wisconsin. And uh, you know, I think our drummer, the Watchman's drummer, Sam, my cousin, uh, said, "Oh, well, this is where Smart Studio, Start, uh, Smart Studios, is like Butch Vig, and where Nirvana recorded." And, and so we're thinking, "Oh, m maybe we can like just knock on the door." And and like I'm just I'm saying that because of your knock on the door reference, but maybe we can yeah. knock on the door and see, like maybe we could just sort of get his 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 engineer like the guy who engineered it like we can't get butch big obviously but maybe we can get the guy who 
who kind of you know pushed the push the knobs for for those records and that's sort of exactly what happened he answered the door a guy named uh doug olson and he ended up doing our next two records and it was it was just sort of that like we were just sort of kids in a van you know hoping the transmission didn't bust on the way to the uh, on the way to the studio and said hey like this is this is who we are this is uh this is our our cassette uh demo um you know maybe maybe we can kind of figure something out and it kind of worked that way um and, and the whole thing at the time was like oh we got to get a record deal we got to get a you know that was the whole thing the, the, the whole end of, like there's so much more independent there's such more of an independent component now to music and i think that's very i think that's awesome because the <clears throat> excuse me the 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 the, the control is <clears throat> is more in the artist's hands now but that being said you know the big bank that is the record company it doesn't have as much money anymore like yeah. I, I i remember <laughs> when we were uh like we get record reps picking us up at the venue and taking us to the radio station to do interviews or whatever and then and the cars they would pick us up in were these like really nice sedans you know like these or SUVs and leather and it's just like it's oh luxury geez, these these are nice cars yeah. and then sort of by the end of it it was like okay I'm taking TTC there can you guys can you guys meet me there you know it could just, you yeah could, yeah <laughs> you, you could see how it's uh you could see how it's how it's changed and um you know so it's not as good in that standpoint but better because the artists have control of their own thing you know and and uh you know from a just a purely artistic standpoint that is that is of benefit and i'm not into the fact that you know there are like 15 zeros before the first digit per spin on whatever <laughs> platforms that people are 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 streaming their music on but you know, it's just kind of like, you know, more people hear it and nobody's making money. Yeah. You yeah. Know, so it's, it's unfortunate and I can't imagine trying to, uh, to eke out a living that way. Um, but, and then, so when you look, when you take now and look back at the nineties, it's like, you realize, oh, it really was kind of, it was sort of a heyday, you know, when, when the only way to do it was to, the only way to hear a song was to go buy it or go buy a concert ticket. And, and now there's a, a million different ways. So um, good and bad all at the same time. Um, and, you know, but that's, that's sort of, that's when I reflect on, on when it started for us and when we were kind of, you know, in our, in our personal watchman heyday, uh, that's, that's sort of what it looked like. Yeah, I'm always interested by that just because like uh, not like being in the industry as a musician, just but like as a fan from the outside, like seeing it through the 90s till now and that whole shift of everything. And I, f I feel like even like as a listener, it's a uh, it's almost less intimate now because you get so bombarded with stuff where before yeah. you go to the store, you get the physical copy and I read the book yeah. and I'm reading all the credits, even though I don't know these people, but it's just right. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it's, it, it's is, definitely a, a less a less tactile uh, uh, experience now. And I mean, I, you know, and then the, but there's always like, you know, there's always there's always the double edged sword. I mean, the, the benefit is that you see people's like, you know, Spotify playlists and they're all over the map and, and they're able to hear the stuff from all over the world and 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 experience things that they, they wouldn't normally do by saying, OK, I'm going to go buy this record and I can listen to this record and then like it just you know it 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 helps and it hurts and and that that's the that's the classic yeah. conundrum you know yeah that's very true even like some stuff i stumbled across too it's just like uh i would have never went to like the show or whatever if i wasn't bombarded yeah. with all these things and yeah, then no, i'm there cool. and maybe i i didn't buy the album i streamed it but I'll buy a shirt like uh, the compensation right, comes in like right. a different way or yeah no and and you know what it really as 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 long as music's been around in a sort of a, in a public way the main re the main way that artists make their money are live shows so that is that's still the situation you know that that's you just sort of uh, you know so it's so it is about that it's about supporting it's like okay well I heard this tune I'm not just going to hear the tune and, and forget about it and then listen to it again. It's like, oh, they go, they're, they're coming to town. I want to get a shirt or I'll go online and I'll, you know, so the, the, the hope is that that, that that happens. And I, and I think, I think the public, the, 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 the public fans out there are sort of, uh, are sort of getting hep to that, to that idea that, yeah, these guys aren't making any money when I 
stream this song or that song. It, yeah. It's it's I mean the, the the hope is that it brings me to the show, and I think people are sort of that they're they're getting wise to that, and and they're starting to they're starting to try and support the musicians in the way that really supports them by going to the show and buying a shirt and you know and that and that and telling their friends and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so you know that that's that's just uh, that is our uh, reality now. Yeah. For sure, for sure. Yeah, and speaking of live shows as well, on August 12th, you guys are going to be playing at the Horseshoe. And I noticed it was a, a live stream, I think I, I saw. Um, now that things are opening, are there going to be some people in the venue or is it just... Yeah, you story? know, it, it's it, it, the, the date's been moved a few times um, because everyone's been moved a few times. So we just sort of get, you know, kicked down the list. Uh, but yeah, it did, it did start out... I think it was supposed to be even close to the release, which was the end of June. So mm. it's been pushed a, a few times. And um, so, yeah, there is, we're, we're obviously honoring the, the live stream uh, component of it, which is, and so that's, the show's August 12th, but there will be people in there now. I, I think, I mean, I think when I mean, the horseshoes you know, capacities, you know, sits around four and a half, I think they're looking at about 25% capacity, but that being said, so about, about hundred people, but that being said, by the time the show date, uh, rolls around we might be in another color-coded numbered uh, situation yeah, it's and, 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 maybe, and maybe it'll be more you know there, there are lots of lots of rules and regulations you got to be sitting down you got to you know all that kind of stuff but it is great that you know originally when we started there would be like nobody in there but now a hundred people I mean we we've we've played to less over the years <laughs> so yeah, so, yeah. Uh, so that so 100 people, 100 fans who are, are into it and have, uh, you know, paid their hard earned money to come see us that I think I think it's going to be a pretty good night. Yeah, that's awesome. And I'm going to try to make it out. I'm just hurting to go see live music. It's been too long, a year and a half. Yeah, and, I know. yeah I know. even it's just crazy. walking down the street, I'm still not used to like seeing people sitting down in restaurants and like local yeah. bars and like. Yeah, well, I, I, I own a bar. That's where I am now. I, I oh, that's amazing. And, and it's so we, we started with the outside and now we have a few people inside and it's like, well, when you stand up, you got to wear your mask. But when you're sitting down, you're like, it's just there's so much so much stuff to know and 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 to figure out and uh we're, we're we're trying to we're trying to figure it out yeah and i'm sure it changes day by day too it's just like it does, it does. Yeah, that's why i say like the you know right now there's 100 people at the horseshoe august 12th yeah. but by august 11th they may change things up and it might uh it might double that capacity or a little bit more or whatever so we're 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 just you know waiting uh, waiting with bated breath as they say yeah yeah Especially, uh, I can imagine too, like your history as a band, you probably got like a lot of, uh, I don't know, sentimental moments uh, with the Horseshoe being a Toronto band, I can imagine. Um, that's kind of uh, like one of the the staples of, or well-known yeah, places. Yeah, yeah, I, I remember, well, I mean, I don't remember particularly or what year it was the first time we played there, but just, but recognizing, like, I remember the, the story I always thought about is that like the police the band, the police played at the horseshoe, like to like seven people. And then like 18 months later, we're playing, you know, Maple Leaf Gardens or whatever. And it was just this sort of like, wow, this place is really a legendary spot. And uh, we were super, I mean, we've done it a bunch of times now and I've done, uh, um, uh, what's, what, what's it called? Um, like just sort of like uh, the other like bands that are playing at the horseshoe and like, I'm losing my words. Pardon me. Just uh, I, I've played there a lot. I've been on that stage a lot. Yeah. It, probably, probably dozens and dozens and dozens of times. And it's um, uh, it is it is kind of a legendary spot. And I know all the bartenders and and uh, and you know it's just a real comfortable comfortable hole in the wall that hopefully we'll be here for another hundred years you know yeah yeah I I just I'm really fascinated with like the legacy of it just like uh, all like anybody who's ever like just hit it off in the music industry like touch that stage and like you mentioned it is yeah. kind of a hole in the wall too which is i find yeah. so charming and uh, yeah no yeah. totally man it's it's very that there, there's a there's a sort of a lower east side new york vibe to it yeah the bathrooms fucking stink and, and <laughs> yeah you know, it's like it's just like you know it's just sort of this place that 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 everyone sort of needs to needs to touch the stage as you say yeah. And uh, and and they all have. I mean, I can't think of any band right now, American, Canadian, whatever, who has not who has come to Toronto and not played that stage. Like, 
whether they've gone on to the ACC or to the Danforth or, or whatever, um, that there's definitely, it's like, oh, the horseshoe, I know the horseshoe, you know, everyone, everyone has a story. So it's, uh, it, it was an obvious choice uh, for us to, to launch this, the, you know, this first sort of live, uh, live incarnation of, of this record uh, there. Yeah, yeah, that's that's awesome. And like, I was getting worried about like all these different like legacy places as well, obviously, because pandemic and stuff, I see stuff yeah. in my neighborhood shutting down and stuff. And, uh, and uh, like you mentioned, you had a, you had the bar and uh, I'm happy to see you still have your bar. You're still Yeah, no, it was and... uh, we, we were swinging, was swinging by a thread uh, for, <laughs> for a long time. But uh, yeah, where we were, I, I always I consider myself, uh, we, we consider ourselves fortunate to still have it. And um and recognize that it wasn't easy but uh yeah we're we're on the other side and things are actually kind of busy because people are what i like to call uh revenge drinking now <laughs> yeah. like they're, they're not just they're, they're they're just they're fighting against the last year and a half by uh with, with with you know with some extra tips and some extra with some extra booze so yeah uh, I'm grateful I, for that. I like that term revenge yeah. drinking even like <laughs> that I was trying to like name the ants I have inside of myself right. too. And even I went for like a, a vengeful coffee the other day with a friend. It was like, Oh, we can yeah. sit down inside. Let's and do like, it. Let's do it. I mean, the, the first night we, we opened inside cause we can have a few people inside now. It was like the nicest day. And it's like, everybody should be outside. You know, we've always been slow in the summer cause we've never had a patio. So, <laughs> yeah. but now we do. And it's like, no, I want to be inside just cause I want to be inside, you know? And, and so, yeah, it, it's, it's interesting seeing how, how everyone's sort of slowly ramping themselves up into uh, is something closer to our, our previous normal, you know? So uh, yeah, yeah it, it's interesting to see. And, and uh, you know, the, we, we, the bar is in a, in a neighborhood and the neighborhood is really rallying around the, the businesses that have, you know, made it to the other side. So uh, yeah. I'm really grateful for that. That's awesome. Yeah. I noticed that in my neighborhood too, people are like shopping locally and just trying to, <laughs> just keep it afloat yeah. and everything. Cause it's very special and everything. And um, yeah, no, yeah. But I think that this has really shone a light on, on a lot of things for people. Like I was just listening to the radio and it's talk radio station and talking about Uber eats and, and, Oh, they take so much money and then they're, they've just increased their prices. And you know, people sort of realize that, that, okay, well, you know, it's going to be better for the restaurant. Just walk down the block, just walk down the block. I mean, if it is down the block, yeah, walk down and, and pick it up because they're going to make so much more money. And if you're trying to support them, the way to do it is, is not through the apps, really. It, it's, it's just going right there, giving them the tip and whatever, you know? Uh, and, and that's, that's what a lot of people are, are, have been, kind of they 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 everyone they're talking about it a lot so everyone's sort of been a little bit uh, being a little bit more educated in terms of how uh, how to really support to support your local community yeah that's true too even in my neighborhood there's an lcbo and then like a local bar and the local bar i know it's going to charge me uh probably yeah. three times yeah. the price for a beer but I, I kept going it's just like it's something special in my neighborhood and like it was yeah. almost worth it for me if they're... yeah no that, that that that's exactly it i mean you know and i always say that because we, we do a lot of takeout here too and it's like okay well i know you can get this cheaper but i mean i can't just i can't sell i can't sell it for lcbo prices you know you have to uh you have to kind of you know mark it up a little bit so but people are people are figuring that out and and you can you can really see that they're that they're supportive of 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 local business local music you know they're really they're they're trying to do their best uh because they realize holy holy crap these guys don't make any money you know like let's yeah. uh let's try and help them get to the other side of this thing yeah it's like i i feel like uh one thing i always try to like i guess preach on the show it's like whether i have a musician like yourself or like a filmmaker or anybody it's just like uh if if you can buy it <laughs> get the itunes yeah. get the the vod yeah. of the film and and because like people don't know like each little purchase it, it does go a long way and it all adds up and sure. it um sure. it also like if you enjoy what the artist is making it's just gonna inspire them to kind of create more and have the right. the means right. to do it too because it's uh it's not cheap to make an album it's not cheap to make a movie it's right right no that that that's that that is exactly the attitude and it feels like more and more people like it are getting a peek behind that sort of curtain 
uh, in, in terms of, okay, what, what does it actually take? And, oh, they're not making anything when I play this song 15 times on my streaming thing. Like, why don't I just buy the record? Like, why don't I, like, I gotta make sure I go to the show or at least, and all these bands have online uh, components too. You can buy their records and shirts and, and all that kind of stuff and, you know, beer cozies on online, you know? So, so, you know, you can, you can definitely do your part and it just feels like more people know uh, know how to do that now and, and know that it, that it makes a difference and that, okay, I'm going to walk to the restaurant and get my cheeseburger as opposed to Uber eating and paying so much more or whatever. And I'm going to go to the show and I'm going to buy the record. And, you know, so it does feel like there, there is more, uh, there's more awareness from, from fans uh, out there. And that's, uh, you know, it's a, it's a slow pendulum swing, but I feel that it is uh, swinging in the right direction. Yeah, definitely. And how are you feeling about uh, getting on stage in front of people again? Uh, have, is, is that something you've been missing like over the past while? I'm terrified. Or? I'm terrified. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Obviously, I, I don't know how I'm going to remember all these words. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, you know what? I, I am. I am looking forward to. It. We've been doing some rehearsing with 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 the group that we're playing with, and um, uh, it is it is going to be neat. And I guess that the thing that's good about it is that it's new, you know, like the Watchmen can go on and, and do, and, and, you know, we, we've been together for so long, we finish each, we finish each other's sentences and we kind of know, we know how to put on a Watchmen show kind of at the best of times and at the worst of times. And, and it's, it's um, easier, I guess. This is, this is interesting because, you know, I have to think a bit more and it's like, oh, this is kind of like, this is a new, this is a new group of guys and this is a new group of songs. And, and um, it, uh, it, it changes the dynamic, but kind of in a good way because it sort of keeps me on my toes. I mean, everyone you know, likes to be lazy and jump into, <laughs> jump into, to what's easy, but this, uh, this is going to be different. And it's, you know, all, all my, all my brain power will be firing and, um, and it's it's going to be an interesting an interesting affair. I mean, I like being on stage, and I recognize that it's probably the most comfortable thing that I know how to do. I close my eyes and I sing some songs that I like. It, it, it's really it, it's it's kind of a magical experience. And and I always, you know, even for a few minutes per any show that I'm on stage, I, I get those sort of moments. And um, you know, it's I guess it's the thing that sort of keeps me keeps me coming back to it you know yeah that's beautiful and uh yeah it's cool that uh you're doing it like these new tracks too it's almost like stepping in the unknown and i've talked to like a bunch yeah. of uh comedians on the show as well and uh they always like kind of mention it's like well i have like this list of jokes that works and i could do it over and over and i always kill it always kill and then I throw a new one in there and i'm completely terrified like the biggest yeah, no that, that's that, that, that's a perfect like, good yeah, yeah. That, 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 that's a perfect analogy because you, you know, as a performer, you, yeah, you, you want it to, sometimes you just want to punch the clock and you want, you know, oh, it can be easy if I just sort of do this and, and whatever, but like the real, you know, the real juice, the real juice happens when, when you do, when you step out on a limb and say, okay, I'm going to play, I'm going to play this one that I've never played before, or I'm going to, you know, or, or or play this new one, you know, even though no one wants to hear a new one, they want to play the hits, you know, yeah. like everyone, you know, like no one <laughs> wants to do that. But for the artist, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a really big deal. You know, when, when we were, when we have written songs historically as the Watchmen, uh, I, I just, I recall that the, the new one that we wrote was always our favorite, you know, like, it, because it's like, oh, this is new. Let's play this new one. It's like, ah, well, it's not as good as the other one, but yeah, let's play it because it's, because it's 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 our favorite and then it well, I was to write another one and then and then that one becomes your favorite but uh there there is something to be said about about just you know going out on a limb and 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 the unknown and that it that's something that it doesn't often happen when you're playing 200 shows a year you just you get in a you get in a routine like with any job but then uh you have the opportunity to do something new and it and it really uh it, it really kind of reinvigorates why you got into this in the first place you know yeah it's cool and I'm sure like as an artist too it can help you like evolve in different ways like see things from different perspectives of what, how the outcome is of trying something new if it, yeah, if it works yeah, if it well, doesn't totally. and take you in different directions and 
Right. Yeah. yeah. When we were, uh, you know, writing songs, you know, in the nineties, we would, we had the opportunity, we were on the road so much, we had the opportunity to, to road test these songs. So you kind of knew, okay, we like this, but then you, you get it, you get an impression by playing them in front of people. Okay. This is a good one. Everyone really likes that one. You, 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 you use that, you know, it's all, it's all good Intel in terms of, uh, in terms of, um, you know, what, what's going to eventually make it on the record. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, if it's, uh, not at capacity by August 12th, I'm going to, I'm going to come and try to see you guys live and everything. That'd be cool. Love it. Yeah. It's uh it sounds like a, a special show for you guys as well too. Like, uh, it's, and it's cool to, I always love like the reason why I do this show. I love hearing like just kind of the wheels going on in people's brains as they create these special pieces and like sad songs for sale. I I've spun it a couple times in the past day and it's like, uh, it's an amazing record and, uh, you guys should awesome. be really proud of it. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. We, we, we are really proud of it. I sometimes, you know, we're all so busy doing everything that we're doing. Uh, and it, it takes a second to sort of step back and realize, yeah, this is like, there's some really good tunes on this man. And, I, and I've, I've had that, that conversation with Joey, a few times and for I, I don't need to say that to him I mean he has his own thoughts he's busy with his own stuff but just like yeah man this is the, the we're we're really like I'm really proud of this and and so you know who knows where it'll go or what it'll what it'll do but um just the 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 doing of the record was the point of it you know mm, yeah. I, I I I I love it if if I I'll, I'll love it I do love it when people love it but the idea was just like let's just do it because this is what we do and and you know singers got to sing and you know players got to play and 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 that was sort of the that was the idea so the fact that it's gotten to this point uh, is is a, a really a really big deal for us awesome i think that's a, a strong point to end this off at uh but Daniel, I want to thank you for your time. It's really nice to meet you. And uh, also, uh, what's, what's your bar called? I'm in Toronto. I might come check it out. Are you, uh, yeah. I, it's called Motel Bar. You can see Motel. You see it behind me there? Yeah, that's right actually, on. Right on. That's actually, that's actually a motel sign from the Lakeshore. Um, uh, motel Bar, it's in Parkdale, uh, sort of Queen and Dufferin area. Just a, a mix of, uh, of locals and, uh, and beautiful strangers and uh local taps we do some live music as well sometimes so uh well actually wow. a lot of times we're, we're working on that we're actually doing a live stream uh today a jazz guy who's oh, gonna cool. sit, sit in that little area there all uh, right on but uh yeah it's it's it, we're we're 10 it'll be 10 years in august and um it's uh yeah it's great i i love it I, i'm not a bartender i'm a bar owner but <laughs> yeah. but i but i do my best uh in, in both capacities yeah, that's that's so awesome to hear, Daniel. And yeah, congrats on 10 years, congrats on the new record, everything. And uh yeah, hope to see you like sometime around the bar or maybe on uh the 12th, August 12th at the horseshoe. Awesome. Yeah, th thanks so much, Sean. Nice to meet you, sir. Hope you guys enjoyed that episode with Daniel Graves. Like I mentioned, his project Serling Graves, Sad Songs for Sale is out now you should check it out and on august 12th if you're in the toronto area he's playing at the horseshoe tavern and also if you're not in the toronto area you can stream it so follow him on social media or us and we'll be sure to share that link that day but before we go we gotta give a special thanks to all you legends on the patreon and first the biggest thanks to our co-producer jeremy hopkin of hopkin design Ola Mazuka of Sonic Fold, Ryan Watkins of Ryan Radio, Amanda McKnight of Top 10 Nerd, my boy Pat Maloney, my brother Ryan Campbell, Daniel Son, Drew Stewart, Devin Staple, Mike Ulio, David Kearney, and Francis Copper, aka my mom. <laughs> Thank you all. I appreciate the support so much. And if any of you want a special shout out and want to hear these episodes a bit early and an extra bonus content check out patreon.com slash the creative imbalance and i also send you a free shirt doesn't matter what tier the three dollar tier the 20 tier everybody gets a shirt all right <laughs> so i'll talk to you soon cheers make it alone. Go back now